Hey everyone, so uh, I was out in Orlando um, the beginning of June doing a FD Aftermath at Orlando Speed World Drifting and uh, it was a great day. Uh, towards the end of the day though, uh, the motor blew up. Uh, I think it was a combination of being on a banked track all day so the oil was you know kind of going to one side of the oil pan with no baffles and uh, possibly some low oil pressure as well. Um, so the rod I thought it just spun a bearing and then once I took it apart uh, I found it was a bit worse than just a spun bearing so that was the rod and it broke up into one two three four five pieces but the rod bolts are still intact so I guess that's good um, I got a new motor already sitting right here it's uh, almost ready to go I ordered a new oil pump some oil pan baffles from improved racing for the GTO oil pan um, and I figured while I have it out and everything is sitting on the floor I'll give you a closer look at at some things so let's start with the uh, transmission mount and get a better lighted view here so remember how I said invest in a welder because then you can do stuff like this you can make custom transmission mounts um, you can tell I used the stock 240SX cross member and just kind of modified it a bit um, it's got some fresh paint on it I just put a new coat of paint on it but it's got this slot cut in it uh, so that way when I put it on the transmission I can kinda you know get the transmission where I need it um, I also made this part this replaces the rubber mount on the S10 transmission and it's basically just flat steel here flat steel right there bent and then two pieces of flat steel for support uh, also this bolt is welded on so that's a, you know a little technique I like to use so before you weld this to the this base part you can grind down the head of the bolt and then grind down the inside of the bent part before you put these on and then just weld the bolt to this so that way this isn't trying to spin when you're trying to tighten it on and then it, it makes it just like a stud um, and then you know the the uh, the mount the other mount transmission the cross member just goes on and you can kind of position it where you need it depending on you know where you want to sit where you want to angle the transmission or whatever um, it's just some tolerance that I built into it um, and actually before I had it way over here and it sat the transmission like maybe an inch too far to the right and that's how I was running it for a while but I figured while I have everything out let me go ahead and modify this and uh, and fix it so that I did that all right so here's the uh, hydraulic lines so you've got your uh, bleeder right here and then you've got the line from the master cylinder and like I said initially you know the bleeder I routed it to like right here approximately so I can bleed it while sitting in the car so that really helps um, and then you know like normal this just goes up and then into the master cylinder like that uh, now that fitting that fitting I mentioned in the first video uh, which one is it? the top one so the bottom one you can see it has that Russell adapter fitting so it slides in there uh, that's the pressure side and then you put that little pin clip in there to hold it in and then you've got a dash 3a in so that's easy now on the top one it's the same concept, but uh, you can see the difference in depth of the fitting between the top and bottom. So the top one fits in there uh, a lot further, so you can't use the Russell fitting. So what I did uh, is this is like the stock bleeder thing that pins in and then runs this whole length to about right here. I cut it right there, uh, cleaned up the hole, uh, you know, for where the fluid travels through. And then I took the Russell fitting, cut it in half, um, about right here maybe. You can see the, the hex right here is the same here. And then welded them together. Uh, again, run, ran a drill bit through the entire length of, length of it to make sure it was clear and free of any debris. And then just pinned it in and then I had my Dash 3A in and I was able to put my bleeder just like a normal you know T56 bleeder kit or whatever you want to call it which really comes in handy and there is the stock slave cylinder from the s10 that i had mentioned well you know still pretty good 
um, tennis blind shaft. So there's that. Uh, this is the exhaust I made. So you can see uh, on the ends here and here, that's three inch V-band off the headers. And then I've got my uh, flex, flex bellows. And then it goes together to this custom Y. Uh, like I said, it looks pretty ugly, but who cares? It's sealed and no one sees it. There's no exhaust leaks or anything. And then straight four inch back is pretty simple. Um, you know, I uh, no mufflers because it's not required. For FD rules and it it exits this is the uh, stock subframe exhaust mount so it exits just past the rear axle so it meets that rule and then there's a the drive shaft uh, you know just your basic one-piece drive shaft so so looking at the motor um, this is the new motor I picked up um, I went ahead and transferred pretty much everything over the uh, intake uh, coils, you know, all the fuel and everything, motor mount, starter, bunch of stuff. So we'll go over that. Um, here's, I guess, a closer look on the fuel rail. For, from the back side, this is where the fuel comes in. And it travels the length of the fuel rail. Um, goes through this hose. Under the manifold. Right up to here. And then, like I said, it's blocked off. Whatever. Um, so, you know, I have my fuel pressure regulator in the trunk of the car. So there's just one single fuel line going up into the fuel rail and just holds constant pressure. Um, this is my oil pressure sending unit. And like I said, I made this little adapter. So you can see it very well right here. Um, this is the stock fitting. Actually, that's the stock fitting on the motor that I got and I just swapped them. This is my old motor, but that's the stock oil pressure sender fitting. So that's the base of it. Like I said, you just break off the plastic and clean it out. And then this was just, I don't know, some bolt head or nut or something that I welded all the way around and then tapped it for eighth MPT and then to three and got an eighth to three AN adapter. And then I just have it, it'll sit about right here in the car. So you can get another, another view kind of. All right, here's the starter. Like I said, it's from a, I think a 2008 Silverado 2500 six liter gas motor. Bolts right on, okay, and it's nice and small. It's short, it's smaller in diameter than the stock 5.3 starter. I'm, I'm not sure why, but it is. Um, the motor mounts right here, uh, they're pretty nice. Uh, he built in some tolerance there so you can get your motor where you want. And if you see, uh, all of this right here is what I had to cut out for for clearance of the headers. Uh, you know, however, I'm not too worried about losing much strength from just this because it's, you know, it's quarter inch steel. I'm not really worried about it. And uh, so far, it looks like it's held up very well. And then the other side, same thing. So uh, right here down there and I think I might have taken a little bit off here I can't remember uh, but same thing built some tolerance in there um, these are just solid aluminum mounts I got off eBay for a, a 240 SX they pretty much just replaced the uh, OEM rubber mounts so again I hope this video uh, you know helps out some people um, I know it's a lot easier to do things when the engines out of the car so I figured it'd be a lot easier to show things as well um, and again, if you have access to a lift, uh, you know, definitely take advantage of it. <laughs> Thanks everyone.